Being a self-certified expert on pretty much any topic, it's rare that a show makes me say, blimey, I never knew that. But that's exactly what happened on several occasions when watching Netflix new series, Ancient Apocalypse. The eight-part series, written and presented by British, yay, writer Graham Hancock, delves into his wild theory of a prehistoric human super-civilization that was practically wiped out towards the end of the last ice age, and how the last few surviving big-brained boys and girls from this civilization spread out across the world to teach those hunter-gatherer normies a thing or two about agriculture, constructing fucking massive pyramids, and a myriad of other useful things. And the icing on the cake is the unbelievable amount of controversy that popped up as a result of the show. So stick around to find out why one British newspaper called this series the most dangerous show on Netflix, as I'll cover this and more right after my short but snazzy theme tune. Big days, big reviews. So let's start with a very brief bit of backstory on the man himself, Graham Hancock. Graham's early career was as a journalist, with a focus on economic and social issues. His first book featured topics such as the spread of AIDS, famine in Ethiopia, and corruption within the international aid community. But in the 1990s, the tone of his work changed radically to a focus on historical mysteries. Hancock put this shift down to a chance encounter in Ethiopia, where he met a monk who claimed to be the guardian of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is the most holy relic in the Bible, as it's supposed to hold the original Ten Commandments. This monk told him the Ark was kept in the church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. But from what little I could find on the subject, it seems that the only eyewitness report on the Ark itself suggests it's a late medieval fake. Oh, and it is empty. And the fact the monks won't let anyone else look at it probably suggests this is true. Still, I bet it's a good little earner. Gotta keep those pilgrims coming, baby. Still, this ropey arc story wasn't enough to stop our boy Graham going full Indiana Jones mode and dedicating his career to solving the deepest mysteries history has to offer, and I, for one, am glad he did. Whilst researching material for his inevitable book on the Ark of the Covenant, Hancock travelled to Egypt, where he says that a visit to the Great Pyramid of Giza, in combination with his newfound knowledge of the Ark of the Covenant, opened his eyes to how out of place certain technology was for the time it was supposedly developed. Oh yeah, and he also mentioned the Ark of the Covenant shooting out bolts of fire and striking people dead, etc. See, didn't I tell you he went full Indiana Jones mode? Anyways, from this point on, Graham's work resolved solely around the theory that the technology we see in antiquity, and more specifically in the prehistoric period, is too advanced for the people of that time to develop on their own. And this is where the theory gets really juicy, as Graham proposes that the explanation for how primitive hunter-gatherer societies built some fucking amazing buildings is with the help of a few surviving members of an Ice Age super-civilization. But wait! There's more! As he also believes this civilization of highly advanced humans were the basis for the Atlantis legend, and that they were practically wiped out by a meteor storm that occurred right at the end of the Ice Age. I mean, if he's right, I can't help but feel some sympathy for these poor buggers. Imagine not only surviving an ice age, but somehow developing into a super advanced civilization, only to be blown up by a load of space rocks just as the sunshine shows up. Anyways, Graham believes a few hardy survivors escaped their doomed city and spread to the four corners of the earth, where they shared their knowledge with the locals. So what evidence does he have for this? Well, I'll tell you, right after I kindly ask you subscribe to my channel. We're very new, so if by some miracle we make it big, you'll be able to boast to your mates that you were one of the original subscribers. Win-win for us both. So the whole point of the show is for Graham to visit a number of incredible historical sites and explain how they provide evidence to his prehistoric civilization theory. He starts off at the remarkable Gunang Padang in Indonesia. As with most of the locations we visit throughout the series, there's disagreement around when this site was originally built. Archaeologist estimates range from around 200 BC to 700 AD, but Al Graham, and to be fair, some heavily disputed carbon dating evidence suggests it's much, much older. Possibly even back to the Ice Age period that aligns with Graham's ancient civilization theory. Now, to be honest, I wasn't convinced by Graham's evidence in this case, as I'd been googling about the site at the same time as watching the show, and it seemed likely that the archaeologists were right on this one. But regardless, Ganang Padang is amazing, and the deep subterranean vaults that the geophysics technology suggests exist below the main pyramid had me absolutely fascinated. Shame no buggers digging them up, eh? Anyway, the next few episodes continue in a similar fashion, visiting Cholula in Mexico, a temple in Malta, and the Bimini Rock Formation off the coast of Miami. At all three locations, Graham explains how he believes the sites to be much older than the establishment archaeologists, as he calls them, believes them to be. Whilst he lacks hard evidence, he points out that the ancient sites sit atop much older sites, which are far harder to date. In all three cases, the links between the sites, such as terraced pyramids, sacred springs, 
and the evidence for links to astronomical events is fascinating. And Graham rightly asks, how did civilization spread all around the world build such similar pyramids without a central guided hand? I mean, I don't know, I'm more of a plumber than a historian, but I found a few theories. Firstly, pyramids are fairly simple structures to build. You start with a large base layer, then build smaller terrace layers above it. This helps with the pesky gravity problem, since you do the least amount of building, the higher up you go. Number two, pyramids don't suffer from wind erosion as much because they got slopey sides. And number three, people traveled, even in prehistoric times. So maybe people spread the word of the earliest pyramids to far off places where the local king said, that sounds wicked, I fancy I one of them myself, and got his people to build him one. So whilst none of this is exactly conclusive, Graham probably should have given the counter argument to his views here. It's behaviour like this that winds his critics up. Anyway, it's episode 5, The Legacy of Sages, that really blew my bollocks off. In this episode, Graham visits Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Now, despite being a man of culture, I'd never heard of this place, so my jaw dropped when I googled it and saw that actual archaeologists have dated this place as being built between 9500 and 8000 BC. Now, I always thought that humans back then were living in caves, bashing each other over the head with stone clubs, or taking their woolly mammoths out for a walk. It's almost impossible to believe they were actually constructing incredible places like this. Now, Graham argues that only a superior civilization would have the knowledge to construct something like this back then and that the local hunter-gatherers would never be able to achieve it. I mean, it's actually quite a compelling argument. Could you imagine this happening? Oi, Chris! Yes, prehistoric Big Dave. First, he takes some time off this hunter-gathering lark and building a fucking enormous temple using simple stone tools to shape thousands of tons of rock. Uh, what's a temple? Don't know, mate. But just imagine how happy the sun god would be if we dedicated it to him. True that. All right, bollocks to collecting food and other things we need to survive. Let's give building this temple figure go. So, uh, how many of the tribes do you think we need to do it? Well, by my estimation, all of them. And all the other tribes in the valley, and probably the ones beyond that as well. Sounds reasonable. I'll give them a shout whilst you crack on. Good lad. Now, if I'm being honest, this was the first time I looked at old Graham and thought, this mad lad might actually be onto something. But again, this is also where I feel Hancock falls down in the series. He could present the evidence against his theory, such as this likely being a period in history where climate conditions allowed humans to settle in one place all year round, and also coincide with the advent of farming in the area. This could mean that the people at that time could produce more food with less labour, and also have a reason to start major constructions, since they were no longer nomadic. But no, yet again he doesn't address the counter-argument, leaving himself open to criticism and accusations of pseudo-archaeology. Regardless, what struck me was the thought that, as interesting as I was finding Graham's Ice Age super civilization theory, and trust me, I was, assuming he's wrong, that means humans were capable of building something as incredible as Gebekli Tepe over 10,000 years ago. That's truly mind blowing, my friends. The remaining episodes continue to deliver fascinating insights into ancient historical sites I'd never even heard of, and Graham weaves his theory into each of them. But I won't go into detail, as you can watch for yourself. Instead, I want to talk about the series as a whole. Firstly, the man of the match for this series is the cinematographer. The photography throughout is stunning. You get beautiful image after beautiful image, making it a joy to watch. They also add in nice computer graphics to simulate how the sites would have originally looked. They also give you an idea of what still lies below the historic ruins based on geophysical evidence. The dick of the series goes to the sound editor that overused the big revelation music effect to such an extent that it got bloody annoying. It was like he had to play some kind of sound effect after every one of Graham's sentences, no matter how trivial. I mean, just take a look at this. Don't, don't rely on the so-called experts. This isn't the only underground city in Cappadocia. I'm beginning to wonder if they were designed to deter human attackers at all. The fact that I live in a house today doesn't mean it was built immediately before I moved in. Towards the end of the series, I was half expected to hear this at some point. There's certainly sealable doors separating the levels from each other. Nah, onto the meat and potatoes of the show, the content. Well, quite simply, I loved it. Graham Hancock clearly believes deeply in what he's saying and wove a fascinating story at each of the locations he visited. Whether you believe that story is up to you, but in terms of entertainment, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, Hancock sometimes annoyed me with how unbalanced his views were, but it took me no effort to look up what historians were saying about the various historical sites while still enjoying the show, so I can make up my own mind. And don't worry, I'll tell you what my thoughts are on Graham's theory in a minute. But before I do, let's talk about the controversy surrounding the show. Firstly, there's accusations of white supremacy. 
From what I could tell, the argument is that Hancock's older work referred to this hyper-advanced Ice Age civilization as being white. He then subsequently edited this out over time. Now, I can't really comment on this as I don't have time to read all the original books in their pre-edited form, even if I could find them. But I will say, if he's made the effort to change this view over time, and certainly there's no mention of which ethnicity this theorized civilization is in the show, then it's a bit of a nothing burger to me. The next controversy comes from papers like The Guardian, who called this series the most dangerous show on Netflix. I mean, that's advertising gold right there. I mean, if I was Graham, I'd be thanking whoever wrote that headline. But reading the article, and for those of you who don't know, The Guardian is a traditionally left-leaning paper, it seems to suggest that it's dangerous to let non-qualified people come up with their own ideas about things, as it could lead to conspiracy theories. Well, Guardian, I'm sure Galileo Galilei was considered a conspiracy theorist in his day, and look how that turned out. Uh, not that I'm comparing Graham Hancock to Galileo. Well, I suppose I am, but you, you, you get my point. In my humble opinion, it's insulting to assume that the wider public will be swayed by wild conspiracy theorists. Let them state their views and any evidence they have. Sure, a small group of nutters will probably believe them, but so what? You're never going to change that anyway, so let them be free to think what they want. Besides, every now and then those conspiracy theories turn out to be true, so how do we decide what's a conspiracy theory and what isn't? Who knows? Certainly not me. To be honest with you, lovely lot, part of me thinks that the mere fact that Hancock has regularly appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast is probably reason enough for certain members of the Outrage Squad to be outraged with him. Look, as far as alleged conspiracy theories go, Graham Hancock's is absolutely fascinating. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not personally convinced by his arguments, but I'm open-minded enough to think he could be right. Sadly, the lack of any tools or pottery from his lost civilization, which, to be fair to Graham, is something he does address on the show, makes it just a bit of a leap too far for me. And his insistence that the establishment archaeologists and historians are trying to cover up proof of his civilization also turned me off Graham a bit. If I were an archaeologist, I'd be absolutely delighted to find out that mankind had forgotten about some ancient super civilization that had seeded the globe with advanced knowledge. That kind of revelation would make archaeology and history as sexy as it was when Indiana Jones first came out. No, I think Graham needs to be honest with himself and realise he receives such criticism because he presents his theory with so little evidence while also ignoring evidence to the contrary. I'm pretty certain that if Graham actually did find tangible evidence of his ancient civilization, most of academia would flock to investigate it with him. Anyway, my recommendation to you lovely lot is to do what I did. Watch the show with an open mind and an open internet browser. Don't believe everything the show tells you, but also don't blindly believe what you hear to the contrary on the internet. Weigh out what you see and come to your own judgment. Or, if you can't be asked to do that, just watch the show for the entertainment value, because on that score alone, it's bloody brilliant. Bloody hell, you've made it to the end of the show. Well done, you. Now, if you could be a diamond and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, that will make sure we can keep in touch in future. Please also drop a like on the video and maybe even comment below. A bit of banter is always welcome. I'd like to wish you all the best. Until next time.